How about disk herniation? What is a disk? What is the function of a disk? And how the disk herniates? A disk is an elastic soft cushion between the vertebrae of the spine. You can see how the disc herniates. It can herniate three ways. One way, posterolateral disc herniation. If you have L4, L5 disc herniation, you will get L5 nerve root. But if you have an L4, L5 far lateral, or foraminal disc herniation, which can happen in about 10% of the cases, then you will get L4 nerve root. But if you have a central disc herniation, you will get coda equina. It is the tail of the horse. Don't mess with the horse's tail. It is a central disc herniation that will give you back pain, bladder and bowel symptoms, saddle anesthesia and numb perineum. You need to get an MRI and you need to do surgery within 48 hours because that will improve the bladder and the motor function recovery. So let's take the disc herniation, which will affect either L5 or S1 nerve roots. That will give you sciatica. What is sciatica? It is compression of the roots of the sciatic nerve as in disc herniation or compression of the sciatic nerve itself as in piriformis syndrome. That will give you pain in the lower back and buttock and sharp shooting pain in the leg down to the foot with numbness, tingling, burning, usually on one side. The pain is worse by sitting and better by standing. It is a self-diagnosed condition and usually improves with time. Usually, you diagnose it by the tension sign or by the straight leg raising sign, which you raise the leg between 30 to 70 degrees, will reproduce parathesia and leg pain, not back pain, because we're stretching the static nerve of the patient. When the patient has positive straight leg raising, it means the patient will get better with surgery. You will do at least six weeks of conservative treatment before surgery. And good outcome for surgery if the patient has leg pain, positive straight leg raise sign, if the patient has neurological deficit, and the neurological findings correspond with the MRI findings. How about the dermatomes in sciatica? Here is an example of the dermatomes in sciatica. This is L4, this is L5, and this is S1 sensory distribution. When the nerve root is compressed, it gives pain and symptoms in a specific area. Plus, the examination of the doctor will also show the motor and the reflexes. We should know that a spontaneous resorption can occur in a sequestered disc. Another topic, confusing names. Spondylolysis, spondylolithesis, spondylitis, spondylosis. You got to know the difference between them, even if you cannot pronounce them. Lysis, spondylolysis. Lysis means dissolve. It's an anatomic defect. It is a pars defect. Lysis occurs commonly in the fifth lumbar vertebra in about 5% of the population, and hyperextension makes it worse.
If you get oblique x-rays, you will see the Scotty dog sign. The spit scan is used to diagnose it if the x-ray is negative. Second one, the spondylolithesis. Thesis, giving a thesis is a big deal, means it is slipped. It is a slippage of the vertebral body, not a slippage of the disc. One vertebral body it slipped forward over the other. It usually occurs at L5, S1 in the pediatric population and L4, L5 in female and adult. In adult, the slippage rarely exceeds 30% and it usually affects L5 nerve root. 15% of patients with pars defect will progress to forward slippage. If there is a large slip, will continue to slip. If you have a dysplastic slip, it will continue to progress. In children, L5-S1 slip will usually affect L5 nerve root. How about spondylitis? It is inflammation of the vertebrae, like enclosing spondylitis or TB. In enclosing spondylitis, it goes from stage of inflammation to stage of fusion. You get bamboo spine. Watch for the marginal syndesmal fights. There is a high risk of C-spine injury. Fracture may be occult. You may need CT scan or MRI to diagnose it. You may have neurological deficit. You may have epidural hematoma. In this case, you need to do laminectomy and posterior spine fusion. How about spondylosis? Spondylosis is vertebral arthritis, degenerative arthritis of the joints between the vertebra. It narrows the neural framing. It pinches the nerve. It causes radiculopathy. In the cervical spine, compression of the spinal cord from arthritis can occur and that will lead to myelopathy. Myelopathy means gait disturbance, broad-based shuffling gait, upper extremity weakness, and clumsiness. Myelopathic hand with interosseal wasting and upper motor neuron signs like the Hoffman and Pepineski. You need to get an MRI of the C-spine. And this is how the questions in the exam comes. Patient with gait disturbance, difficulty in walking, have hyperreflexia. MRI will show severe lumbar stenosis. What is the next step? Obviously, if you examine that patient, you'll have positive Hoffman sign, positive Bepineski. See, he got cervical spine myelopathy. You need to get an MRI, but if you can't get the MRI, you will get CT scan with myelogram of the cervical spine. Coexisting cervical myelopathy can occur in lumbar stenosis. When they tell you the plantar extensor response is positive, it means Extensor response of the toes to plantar stimulation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I was helpful.